So Frank, when was the first moment you realized you wanted to be a designer? Um, what was that kind of like? That's a funny question because um, <clears throat> growing up I used to paint just like on the weekends and my mom was really into getting me into art. Uh, so I always did it, but it was almost like a hobby. Um, and I actually went to undergrad for pre-med. I uh, thought I was going to go to med school, worked in the ER for two years after graduating, thinking that like that's the trajectory I was going. So I was never really thinking about being a designer. Uh, and in my two years working in the hospital, I realized that I had a side of me that was more creative. The doctors I worked with kind of saw that and kind of encouraged me to pursue that. I honestly think they were jaded with the healthcare system and they were just like, it's not what it used to be. It's, it's, it's a lot more complicated, all this. Um, and it made me think like, hey, maybe I should think about it before I jump into med school. So I took uh, some time off uh, in between applying to med schools and thinking about what I could do and wanted to do some more creative, but I didn't have a book, didn't go to undergrad for that. So I had to figure out how to do that. So I know that there were programs like portfolio schools specifically towards advertising. Um, that sounded super interesting. It was like problem solving. It's like, you know, very, you got to think about the situation. How do you dissect it? How do you come up with a creative solution? And it sounded really appealing. So I spent a year working on my book, got into grad school for advertising as an art director specifically. And that's kind of when I started this process of being more design focused, but I still didn't call myself a designer. Um, so after graduating from the program, worked in the advertising agency for a year. Then I jumped over to Google where I worked at the creative lab there. Um, and there is when I started touching like product and product design. Um, the creative lab is not a place that necessarily carries out the product like development. We work with the teams internally to kind of see that through. So I guess I got a taste of that and I got really excited about the product development side and being in New York and I was able to talk to somebody who worked at Oscar who said that they need somebody who's a product designer there. And that was really intriguing to me to think about being a product designer at a healthcare company, given my background of working in healthcare and wanted to kind of come full circle. Uh, so I don't think I ever realized I wanted to be a designer. I think it kind of one of the things where I almost, I don't want to say fell into it, but it just kind of happened that way. And I think it happened organically and it's super exciting because if you had asked me five years ago would I be doing this, I would be like, absolutely not. I don't think so. But here I am and like super excited, love what I do and I can't be happier. So It's interesting to hear everyone's journey because some people take the, you know, whatever quote unquote normal route, go to university and then go to grad school for design and people are coming from just different various areas and it's really interesting to hear kind of the journey. So that's an interesting journey. So the Google Creative Lab is projects for Google but not necessarily on their products. No, it's always on their products for the most part, but it, um, it's like vision work. Um, there's a variety of things you can do there, but like the products I got to work on were like rethink some of their existing products in, in different markets uh, because of different demographic of users, like the way they use the product. Um, so it was a lot of like, look at what they currently have and, and kind of repurpose it or think of a vision, if you will, um, which is really exciting because you're getting to work with some amazing products and having to rethink them is daunting, but it's also super exciting because, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to like, to evolve and to develop a product in, in, in a way that you think might be more useful to a new set of people. You landed at Oscar, can you explain, you have explained a little bit, can you explain why you took that job and like, kind of your passion behind that? Yeah, for me it was, um, like I said, it was an opportunity that I didn't expect to kind of come forward. Um, and when it did, I, I, I thought a lot about it, like the opportunity and, and the bigger problem that Oscar was trying to solve at the time and apparently still is. And the opportunity to kind of help the team build out the product. Um, you know, when I joined, they had been around for two years and the progress they had made was really exciting. And to think about like using these skills that I had both in back in my healthcare and like that, that kind of problem solving and then the, the bit I learned in advertising and then at Google and being able to apply it to something like this where you're actually, you know, you're trying to help people and like honestly trying to, you know, just reimagine what healthcare can be because the way it currently is, it's just very convoluted and it's not, it's not easy. It's not streamlined. It's not, you know, what you'd expect. And so I think having the opportunity to use my skills and, and, and work with an amazing team here and, and build up a whole ecosystem of healthcare that we really believe in and we're really trying our best to like, bring to life is something that really excited me and then made me want to jump and join the team. And, and the people here, like I said, are amazing, super smart. Everybody believes in the mission and I think that's very contagious and it's something that you, you, you come into work knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. And even the bad days all are worth it when you realize like you're actually helping people. And this is something that, you know, kind of bigger than yourself. That's incredible. Um, there is to people maybe that don't know what Oscar specifically is in the healthcare industry. 
So Oscar is a health insurance startup um, that uses data and tech and design to kind of our mission is to simplify healthcare and make it more transparent um, on both sides of the coin. So for the member, obviously, so when you go to a doctor's office to find the right doctor, uh, to understand your benefits, to understand your, you know, once you get your claim or you get your, your your care, you understand what you're paying for and why you're paying for it. And then also streamline streamlining the back end. So making payments quicker, uh, making doctors get reimbursed what they should be reimbursed and then kind of creating a relationship that's that's healthy for both sides, not just for the members and not just for the providers, but for everybody involved. Um, and just looking at the system and how like convoluted it's become and understanding that there's a lot of opportunity to 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 streamline that and and you know, doing our best to make this like a simple process so that a member can understand exactly the care they're gonna get and and, and not like be blindsided when a bill comes or no, not understand how to find the best doctor or why they need to see this doctor. It's honestly just to make people change their behavior with healthcare um, and just be healthier. <laughs> Oscar is actually the insurance provider, right? Yep. So we offer insurance. Okay. We also have a bunch of products and features that allow people to find the right doctor. Um, you know, schedule appointments, talk to a doctor for free. So it's a it's a whole like the reason I think that I was so excited about Oscar is that. You know, there's some great companies out there that are doing a lot of feature, uh, healthcare features. So like searching for doctors and stuff like that, which are all super important. And you know, we're really excited that they're out there too. Uh, but for us, we really thought that making a difference was to be a health uh, insurance provider because at that point you get to touch every part of the whole process. And if you want to change it, it's best to have your hands involved with everything because then you can kind of see the end-to-end -end process. So you are in the middle of everything. Health, being a healthcare insurance provider, what are some kind of the steps that you kind of try to streamline uh, for your users? So, you know, one of the things that you think about but you don't really realize it until you're practicing and designing at a healthcare startup is that most of the times when people use your product, they're going to be sick. Um, so unlike some other tech startups, like, you know, who might be kind of capitalizing on like an enjoyable moment like music or, you know, like matchmaking and stuff like that, which are all fun and great and necessary, like I think that for us, it's it's interesting to think about that when people turn to you and use your product, they're either dealing with something, you know, something like a common cold or something more severe and, and to understand that your product has to get out of the way and allow them to get the care that they need and, and not try to like over design, but just give them the right amount of design. I think that was one of the biggest challenges for me is understanding like people aren't necessarily the happiest when they turn to your, not, not no always, but like when they're looking for a doctor, they're sick or their kid's sick. It's a moment of like you're frantic, you're trying to figure it out. And I think that's that was one of the first things. Um, another thing is just like you know regulations. You have a lot of things that you have to say, you can't say, you have to show, you can't show. Um, so while you try to keep your design super minimal and clean and, and, and you know easy to understand, sometimes you're required to have disclaimer or required to like not show this but show that. So that's one of the challenges that I think that I've I've had to learn here and and, and understand like how to work with that. And I think we're getting better every day. And I think that's something that is an opportunity to kind of influence and change. Um, and then obviously just privacy and people's, you know, private information and just making sure that's always secure and that there's never, you know, you're never revealing something that you're not supposed to. Coming into Oscar in the healthcare, like startup based, right? Probably haven't had too much experience like knowing all the ins and outs of insurance and what that looks like. How did you kind of get up to speed when you got to Oscar? Is it kind of like an onboarding, um, a lot of resources to read and look, or is it just kind of on your own learning different things? So I think it was like uh, two steps. I think that the onboarding here is great. They have like a whole glossary and like this whole kind of education sector, like how do they help you kind of understand and get you up to speed. Um, but the reality is also that it's just super complicated and I think it happens organically. Uh, being a product designer on a small team, I think we get we have the opportunity and we're privileged to work with a lot of the departments here. So just like over like my time here, I've gotten more you know familiar with the claim system, more familiar with like how to schedule, like more familiar with like just explanation event, like all these like kind of buzzy healthcare words. You start to understand them and see them in practice, and and the more you learn and the more you see, like the more you see an opportunity to change and to make it a bit more efficient. Because you see something, you're just like, wait, why do we do it this way? And it's like that's just the way it's been done for the last what 20 years. And so it's an awesome opportunity as a product designer to look at it and be like, wait, what if we just did this? And then you're like, you realize like there's so many other regulations in place that have, <laughs> don't allow you to do it that way. But that's that's our job here, just to push it and push the vision and like see how much we can push and make it not what it used to be, but make it the way we want it to be. So I think uh, to answer your question, it's just 
you have to do a lot of research when you jump in and, and, and you join, but I think it's also just organically, the more you, you work in the industry, the more familiar you're going to get. Um, and yeah. Uh, going off that kind of, um, how are you interacting with uh, other designers at Oscar? How big is your team? And uh, what's the interaction look like from like cross um, disciplines, so designer to developer, or designer to maybe a data analyst? Um, how do you interact as a team? Yeah. So. Uh, one of the things I really was attracted to here is the size of the design team specifically. Um, there's only five of us. Um, before I joined, there was two uh, that were mainly like leading the whole force for the last year and a half. And it was impressive to see the amount of work they had done with just two designers. Um, so jumping in with, oh, when I was hired, two other designers were hired around the same time and the team grew to five. And I think that's still the size we have. This is still the size we have it now. And I think that's one of the things we really enjoy. It's like we all sit in the same row. Um, so when we're working on things, it's just a matter of like looking over somebody's screen and like, you know, giving feedback or asking for advice. And I think that that's been super helpful because, like you said, most of us didn't come from another healthcare company or a tech startup in the health industry. So we're all kind of new to that. And I think that having each other right next to each other, one another has been super helpful for bouncing ideas off and like kind of overcoming obstacles. Um, and then to you answer your question about development and working with developers and product managers and stuff. We, each of us is like assigned to a goal-based team. So in that team, you have your team of engineers and you have your team, your, pro, your, your PM with you. Um, so you work closely with your engineers and, and you understand their constraints and you understand their requirements and like how to hand off files and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we're very fortunate is that we're, we're so small um, compared to other health insurances especially. And I think that that allows us to kind of be flexible, be nimble and, and, and learn from one another. And I think that having that little like family support group is has been super vital to all the designers here in terms of like getting work out there, getting feedback and, and, and just getting better at this, you know. What's the culture um, look like at Oscar specifically with design? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and I think that like as we're growing, um, you know, when we grow with membership, which we're very fortunate to have done over the last two years, um, your company has to grow too, just to kind of, you know, scale at the same rate and, uh, and to support those people and support the infrastructure. And when we're expanding to new states, like all that has to grow proportionally. Um, so as we grow, it's very important for us to keep our team small from a design standpoint, but also keep ahead a of the table. Um, and we have a great VP of product who he's, he's great about like, keeping us, you know, in the know and sort of representing us in those important meetings. And I think that it's also a matter about us interjecting design in other parts of the company. So whether it be like, you know, swag or, or just helping out with like the new office design or layout, like, you know, the small things too, just like as, as much as we can kind of interject design in there, that's kind of the, the, where we get the most kickback too. People realize that we're, you know, a strong team, that we're excited to be here. And I think that this company is great because they they really do focus on the data technology and design and obviously the people. And, and I think every single department is represented well. And you know that like, if I had an issue or if I thought something, I, we have all hands every Friday and I could raise my hand and ask the CEO directly a question and he'll answer it very honestly. It's a very transparent environment and I think that's something that, that you might not get at a bigger, bigger place. And we want to make sure that as we get bigger, uh, we keep that kind of culture and keep that, that, that vibe here so that it never gets lost and it doesn't turn into like a you know, hierarchy where you feel like you're not represented. So right now it's great. Uh, we have a great seat at the table, and I think we're excited to see how that grows. More specifically into the design process, the design journey maybe that you take with a specific feature, can you walk us through uh, maybe you know, or a feature that you know is needed maybe for all the way to how that feature gets implemented into the software, um, kind of the design process at Oscar? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now we're working with, like uh, I'm specifically working on building tools to help um, our, our reps and our, and our member services here be better when, you know, just provide a better experience for the members when they call in and ask questions about anything related to the health insurance. So just to give an example, as we build those tools, you know, it starts off with kind of vision work. So kind of thinking about what it could look like from a visual standpoint, you know, wireframing, but like just conceptualizing what we want this thing to be and what's it solving, who's it solving for, you know, what information we're going to surface and that, et cetera. And then kind of we check in with engineers and, and we show them kind of early prototypes and show them like what we're thinking, the vision. And then that evolves into, you know, any kickback from them from a technical standpoint, maybe thinking about the staging and development. 
Um, and then as we start moving forward, we stage the project out and then kind of bring in people to use your test, if you will, on prototypes and see how that interaction works. If they, if they feel comfortable with this design, if they feel comfortable with the new product, you know, make any changes and iterate. And that can depend on the size of the, the, the feature of the product. It may be with small iterations or small revisions. Some of this is major revisions, major iterations. Um, and then we start to like roll it out to, you know, once you start building the staging process, we roll it out to different teams, small teams at first, so we can kind of see how it is in practice, see it live, get feedback, any bug fixes. And then once we feel we're comfortable, we've gotten to a place where we think it's sustainable to kind of be released, we release it and, and we just track it and monitor it. So it's definitely like, you know, for me, especially coming in here from a like more creative agency and then Google, it's like now working with developers and engineers and, and you know, PMs, it's been great to see like how we refine that process um, and how we make sure that, you know, we're not blocking engineering, engineers not blocked, you're not being blocked by something else. Like we're just making sure that it's very streamlined and that like the end user in this case could be their member services or the member themselves like are getting the best product at the best time and if we have to iterate we can do that quickly so yeah i mean that's kind of the process it's it's constantly evolving and um but i think right now we're, we're we feel pretty good about how we're moving forward so you're talking in this example about member services so they're in as well so you're testing them in yeah so the great thing about having like member services here you know um, one is we can go down and like sit next to them and, and see the product in the future and, like in practice and sit next to them and see how it works in an actual phone call um, or you know conversation with a member and then the other side of that too is we get to listen in and hear conversations with members directly so i can shadow uh, member services and and hear members have any issues with our product so if they call in about something that's related to the app or the website or the product itself like you get a first-hand feedback from an actual member who actually tried to use your product and then you can kind of take notes and go back to the team and say, hey, you know, I've been hearing a lot of complaints about this. Or I've heard a lot of members are having issues with this. And so we can, we have this, we're very fortunate to have these members who engage with us daily. And we essentially have like this like plethora of like user testing, if you will, focus group that we can work with. You can literally walk downstairs and, and hear real users uh, calling in at their worst moments. Exactly. Exactly. Let's go for this example. It's not um, like the phone member center inside, but it's actually a user care insurance, um, just like a consumer. How do you find those people to test it on and kind of what's that process look like? Are you sending out an ad and Craigslist and getting uh, people to test and they kind of bring them in or how's that work? I think honestly, we've, we've probably done that before <laughs> just because that's one way to get people. Um, but right. yeah, one, one of the guys on the team, he's a, his name is Adam, he's great about uh, kind of user, leading that user testing. He has a lot of experience from his previous uh, jobs, so um, he's great about resourcing. He works with, you know, creative recruiters and stuff, like, just to figure out how to get the people on the operations side of that. But yeah, usually we're bringing a small group of, we try to get members since they, they're familiar with the product. Um, but if we're very, very early stages, we can bring anybody just to kind of get feedback and, and, and see, not even from like the bigger experience of last year, but just more specifically on the product of the feature we're rolling out. Um, in addition to that, we'll honestly walk around the office and, and, and just pull people into the room and, and you know, just get their perspective. Um, that's kind of nice having, you know, a lot of people work here. It's like you have a plethora of people who, who are willing to work with you because they're excited about the product and stuff and they want to see it. Um, so there's that. And then, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think if we're moving close to production, we will bring in like a, a more focused user group um, from members, a member pool um, and, and work with them. Um, but like I did say, like, I mean, sometimes I guess when we're rolling our new features that way, but we even when we're rolling our new features and, and we just release like V1, you know, we, we keep a close uh, ear to the ground on from the member calls and see if there's any like calls coming in really into that or really into the new feature release so we can understand our members and, and, and make any changes accordingly. But yeah, prior to that, we do have some groups and we bring them in. So how does data play a role um, in design process at Oscar? Yeah, so data is huge here. Um, we have an incredible team of data scientists, data analyst, analysts, and then you know some risk assessment. And the team is great. Um, they're constantly involved in the process uh, with your goal-oriented team because every team, you know, you need to understand like if you're working with product, like what what data points you're going to show, what data points you want to like kind of monitor. Um, whether it be a marketing site, just understanding the use of the site and the page to like more specifically like what searches are people doing on our search for doctors and like what words and what keywords and then in our algorithm. So for, for me, it's been really great to have this kind of resource because um, 
you can kind of quickly get a metric for if your if your product's been successful or not, you know. Um, and then also understanding what that information has surfaced up, and that's something that we're constantly trying to do better is is make sure people get the best care, and and making them understand that the best care doesn't always mean the right search that they might have had. So just because you're looking for an orthopedic surgeon, we want to make sure the data shows that while you think an orthopedic surgeon is the one you need, we actually think that, you know, based on the quality of care, based on the cost of care for you, like going to see your general, you know, family medicine might be the right choice. So it's like, how do you use data to kind of surface that up and make people understand that? Um, and that's the thing about here. It's like making sure people understand their healthcare uh, and, and using data wisely to do that, you know? Um, so yeah, it's been great. I mean, they're always interjected into each team. Um, you can go to them for anything and be like, "Hey, can you pull this curate? Can you show me this?" And then they're great about that. So it's it's been it's been awesome to have them integrated to our product team. It's so like you're saying earlier. Uh, a lot of the people that are using your product either have family members that are sick or they're sick themselves, and so presenting the right data at the right time in a friendly way that can empower them to make the right decisions is important. Um, so yeah, that's really that's really awesome that you're doing that. What are some specific challenges with data? The biggest challenges right now is just having the right data and the right information. And I'm, I'm talking the most basic, like, contact information for a provider's office, um, which seems like crazy in 2016, but that's just a very real problem. A lot of the data out there, you know, offices has changed, numbers get updated, and then there's not this, like, one central database for this. So, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest missions for one of our teams here is just to make sure that all of our data for providers is accurate and up to date so that when a member look somebody up and calls that the office exists and stuff like that, which is, again, it seems very basic, but it's a very real problem. Um, and then also just understanding, like you said, not, you know, information blindness or information overload is also like the two-parted extreme. And I think it's understanding what information is appropriate to surface and when. Um, you don't want to overwhelm somebody with a lot of numbers and, and analytics and then show them all this stuff and it just might be overwhelming when they're trying to find a doctor for their child, you know? So understanding like what's out of the data points we can surface, what's the most valuable that's gonna give them to make the right decision and make the best decision for them. And then, you know, getting feedback and understanding whether or not people care about this information or not. And that's something that like, for me, it's been great to like think about how do you surface it up? How do you design like a member profile page or a doctor profile page so that it's not just like completely overwhelming and unusable, but also not like too bare so that it doesn't give you any sense of the thing, you know? And also understanding like what what data, like not even like how to surface it up or, or when to surface it up, but like, you know, is this the right, is even this, this number the right number to show? And, and so it's been a bigger, a big challenge, but it's been great because like, you, know, you can sit around and think about so many different visual like design layouts and stuff like that, but it all comes down to what you're what you're showing and how you're showing it. And the ultimate goal is just to make sure people make the best informed decisions. And so that's you know the important part of the information you give them. So it's been great. It's been fun. Same route, like I third more on just the visual, you know, digital agency kind of side, kind of side where it was like let's just make the sexiest thing we can show on dribble. Right. And then this, Thing where it's like product design, user experience, we're actually trying to understand the user. And yeah, you want it to look great, but at the core, you want it to empower them um, and you really feel empathy for them. So, and something that, like, you know, like we, our demographic, like our user base, the age is so, the, age, the variety of ages is so great, right? We go from young kids to, to older uh, people, and, and you have to understand that, like, you can't just make something that only appeals to one small segment. Like, in the, the day there's a wide variety of people using your product and you can't just make the smallest type to make it all fit like you have to understand like people they look at things differently they look at different screens that's another thing where one of the challenges to answer one of your previous questions is you know as you roll to new states and and we hit you know new york was great we rolled out here first in new york being a tech startup and health insurance we got a lot of early adopters who were trying to get the newest thing or see what this new company was about but as you roll out to different states, like you're not necessarily getting those exact same users. So it's been interesting to find people who maybe don't have a smartphone, maybe don't have a computer, but they still have Oscar health insurance, right? So how do you keep the experience for them just as great as you do with somebody who has a, you know, the latest MacBook and has the latest iPhone. So, you know, just because they don't have a smartphone or don't have a MacBook doesn't mean that they should get a lesser experience. So that's been something that's been really challenging for us is to like, you know, make sure they have the full tech data design experience that Oscar wants for people who maybe say don't keep up to date with tech or design you know and that's kind of our responsibility as designers to to synthesize and simplify all that because all the work that the data team's doing all the work that the claims team is doing 
there's all this complexity. And at the way I look at it is design at Oscar is applied in a way that like synthesizes all that information in an easy, digestible way for our members and whatever platform that means. There's, as you expand, don't own any kind of technology at all. So they're literally just using Oscar as a health insurance provider. So it's all on paper. Yeah, we have to go to paper. I mean, like, you know, one of the cool things working here is like you have to design a fax. Like <laughs> you're a tech startup and, and I've had to design like actual faxes because it's something that people use very, very commonly in, in the healthcare world. And, you know, just because we're a data company and a technology company doesn't mean we can ignore the common practices, at least in the beginning. And so, you know, even like magnets, like for some of our members who don't have smartphones or who don't have a computer, like we still want them to have the same experience. So we think about ways to reach them and, and do it the Oscar way. So what does the Oscar magnet look like that sits on somebody's fridge that reminds them of all the great stuff? What does the uh, Oscar facts look like that go to the doctor that doesn't like use a web you know, portal? So it, it's, it's been great. And that's something that like, I, being a health insurance, we're very, very like we're privileged to have the opportunity to work with such different situations. You know, as a product designer, and I, the one way I look at it is like we have an arsenal of design here because we can't just think about digital or web. We have to think about tangible analog stuff too. So, How do you personally do health yourself. So you're a healthcare startup, um, and a lot of what you do is try to make other people healthy. Um, do you have anything you do for yourself that you try to advance or any? Oh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I've mean, picked up running a lot these last, like, <laughs> since I lived in New York, I like, think you walk a lot and also just, you know, try to stay healthy yeah. and eat well. And, and I think that, yeah, you do, when you work so closely with the healthcare, you start realizing, like, yeah, it's actually very important to, like, you know, go see your doctor, get your annual physical, get your preventative benefits. Like, it's it's all about making sure that you live what you what you preach. And, and that's something that I think we're all, you know, one of the designers is, like, really into yoga and wants to start teaching yoga. Like, we're all trying to, like, live this kind of lifestyle we're promoting um and then also just keep up to date with like new hardware startups and tech startups that are in the same sector so you know always keeping up with like the aminos and the zocdocs and seeing how they're doing things and seeing their uses also looking at like you know the new health insurance like clover um there's also that bright health that just got formed um so just keeping up with like punch base and making sure you understand like what startups are coming in especially because i think healthcare startups are becoming very topical right now and I think that there's a lot of like just like a lot of opportunity in the healthcare sector not necessarily health insurance but just health um, like you know the job bones the Fitbits uh, obviously Apple and Nike you always got to keep them close too so I think it's just a matter of staying up to date and understanding what everybody else is doing and seeing like if there's an opportunity for Oscar um, either to work with someone or just to like you know see what they're doing and see how we can kind of incorporate some of the features in our stuff I think it's it's a small community like you probably know designers and 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 product designers in healthcare specifically. So I think we all kind of keep each other on our one's radar and, and just make sure we keep, you know, understanding what's going on. What kind of advice can you give to a young designer like myself, possibly a uh, career in healthcare design? That's a great question. I mean, I think that the way I'll look at it is like, what well, advice would I would have wanted to receive prior to like jumping in here? And I think that for me, it's um, once you jump into healthcare, or any like something that's a highly regulated, like there's, there's you got to think about the user. You got to think about like what the end goal is, and and so like the example I gave you is like when you're designing for a healthcare product, like in our case insurance. So in our case, people are sick and they need to get care. You got to think about the user not being the happiest person to use your product. So don't just try to make it like you said the most beautiful and like minimalist design because that not, might not be the right answer for that. So I would honestly like look at workflows anywhere like look at your, your your current health insurance look at anything and then look at your design of a workflow and like redesign it reimagine it reconcept it um i mean honestly i think it's just a matter of showing like your thinking throughout the whole process and not just being like strictly visual or strictly leaning on like the you know the type and the colors but more like the usability and the functionality of it so i think that something that you know as we look for designers to join the team we love to see that that thought process and and like showing us that they were able to to take on like a big problem and and took showed all the steps that were involved and needed to, to kind of come up with the solution and then being that we're a small team and you have to wear many hats here like your visual skills have to be great too so i think that just comes with practice you know people sometimes knock on dribble because dribble is like a community of people who just design the same thing over and over again but i like it i think it's great for inspiration i think it's great to see what like get a sense of the pulse of like what's trending and what's not and i think that it's important to to kind of showcase some of those elements in our design okay. too. Uh, so but I do think that one of the things that, that kind of falls short in that sense, and I'm sure I'm guilty of it in my best, okay. is just that 
people design very minimalist and very clean, but without thinking about the actual functionality of the of the what they're designing. Um, so as a young designer, honestly, I think it would just matter of just showing your, your thought process, showing how you dissect the problem and how you come up with a solution and, and just thinking about the user, you know. Um, I think it's already a huge win that there are designers like you who are interested in healthcare um, because I think that's, it feels good knowing that we're not alone. Because <laughs> some people, like yeah. you said, are daunt, they're daunted by it. They're like, ooh, they hear that I work for a health talk insurance startup, they're like, why healthcare? I tell them it's like, you know, one of the most rewarding things ever. It's like when you do something and you see the results and you see that you can look at the data and see that people are, are using it more or going to see their, you know, primary care physician or, or calling in and, and, and not having to, you know, be, be able to understand their bill better. It's like the simple changes that, that we can do make a huge impact. And I think that's something that's super rewarding and, and the reason I'm here.